guys today I am just popping in to see if I can do a quick little recap of the things that we did during our body unit I get a lot of questions about our unit studies so I thought maybe I could just um, try to answer a few things the kids are gonna be loud in the background I'm sorry in advance yeah so I'm gonna try to go through what some of my plans were for the body unit I'm gonna just warn you now, the majority of the things that I had laid out for us to do during the body unit did not get accomplished. However, it does not bother me one bit, and maybe I can just kind of walk you through why it doesn't bother me. Most people ask me how long the unit studies last. Normally, our unit studies last anywhere from one month to two months. This time around, it was closer to three months, maybe three and a half months. A little bit abnormal however um, I did know that it was going to take a little bit longer than most of them do because we started it around the holidays and then December we had um, some things happen that really threw us well through me off track the great thing about the way I started to plan once we started doing year-round homeschooling is that we pretty much plan by goals so um, we've started the new school year for us, if that is such a thing when you're year-round homeschooling. Um, but I haven't really had to do any new planning um, because the way that we laid out our goals were so well beforehand um, that we just keep it moving. And along the way, I add new goals to our list and some of the old goals that I set out to accomplish that maybe didn't... Um, get met or we didn't reach we just you know put them back into the rotation again and I did not get to accomplish everything that I set out to accomplish but the great thing is the way I pull the resources together I just kind of you know stash them away and wait for the next body unit to roll around again and then we'll just dive in from there and then add any new resources that we find so I thought I was going to be able to do this recap by showing you lots of video footage of what we did. However, I didn't have as much as I wanted to have, so I thought I would just um, sit down and talk about what we did and why we loved it so much. This one, I said this after we finished our space unit, but this body unit was one of our favorites as well. Um, we did less activities and such because so much was going on um, in our family space. So I didn't have as many of the prepared activities that I wanted to have involved, but the kids still had a great time learning and exploring the different parts of the body. Um, in the beginning, we used to try to incorporate every subject into the unit, and it makes a lot of sense. However, um, I found that it really, I don't know, I started to frustrate myself. This, this is like years ago or a couple of years ago in the beginning when we would do unit studies. I'd try to have, say if we were doing the body, I'd try to have body parts and use them for math and counting. Or um, I'd try to do all body words um, for reading or all body books. And those things are really good, but it took me a while to figure out how to fit the units in and still be able to focus on my core, um, my core subjects so that reading writing, math, um, that whole deal. So the way that we have our schedule set up right now, we do it on a block schedule um, with language arts and math being you know, our two main focuses. We do language arts on Monday and Wednesday and Tuesday and Thursday we focus on math. And basically how that fits in is we always start with Bible, then we move on to either language arts or math depending on which block it is. Then we move on to reading um, which is just simply reading, you know, our books that we have, spending time reading together or separate or whatever. That's basically what um, our reading time is. And then after we finish reading time, then we move on to our unit study. So we're studying our unit every day, whereas um, our language arts focus is done twice a week. Our math focus is done twice a week. And then we split up our electives um, so that we are covering an elective once a week. So on Mondays we are doing writing, on Tuesdays we are doing 
geography. Wednesdays we are doing science, Thursdays we are doing history, um, Fridays are normally art and music, and then I fit some other stuff in on the weekend um, if time allows. So that is how we handle our schedule and it's working out super, super well. So it basically we do whatever we are working on for our unit studies every single day and it comes normally after our reading time. Yes, yeah, so it's Bible, language arts and math, then uh, reading time, then our unit study time, and then we move on to an elective and then we're pretty much done with our day. So we get in our unit work every day and that is working out so well for us without me feeling like I have to fit all of that in with our focuses or studies in language arts and math and of course Bible. Um, I got a lot of printables offline using my Pinterest and I'm going to list all of the links for the things that I actually printed out and cut up um, in the description box. Um, but basically we did not get to use a lot of the things that I printed out and I am perfectly fine with that. I had a lot of fun ideas for them but we did not get around to them. We just didn't, and even though the unit was super long, like I said, it was kind of a special case, but that's okay because I can just pack them up and put them away for the next time we open up the body unit. But I had the best ideas, you guys. Most of them were mainly art related. Um, the things that I did print out that we used, these little matching cards, I just have the different organs and their matching parts. Um, so we did do these. So we did use these body models quite a bit. Um, I really liked them and thought that they made a great addition to our unit. However, there are very particular things I didn't like. The fact that they are very small, they are not the easiest to handle, and um, they broke. Um, they come in these little stands on these little stands and they're quite flimsy and my bones my little bones skeleton model broke and then my heart model my heart model also broke off of the stand so that's not fun um, and the fact that they're so small is not fun as well but I got them as a bundle set and they were on the lowest price that I had seen them and I had been tracking them for a while. And the other human body model sets that I've seen are just way out of my price range. So even though I wish they were better made and I definitely wish they didn't break, they still you know, fit into our unit very nicely and I was able to pair them with the cards that I made. Um, when I purchased things, to use in homeschool I try to get stuff that I can use year after year and that can be used for uh, the different levels so I, I try really hard not to purchase things that are for say pre-k age that I'm not going to be able to use next year because that's a waste for me if we were in a school and we just taught like one grade then great you'd be able to use it each year in pre-k or kinder or whatever you want to call it but for us I need to be able to use it from year to year as they are advancing into new levels. So I'm really particular about the things that um, I pick up to be able to use because I want to be wise about my homeschool purchases. So yeah, we used the models with the little cards and I showed you this in another video. Um, so I really like the way that this turned out and I'll leave a link for these if you want to try them. I have full definitions on here of the different body parts and I did not expect them to memorize this. What I wanted to get from them in this unit is just to kind of discover the different parts of the body, how complex it is, and you know, how incredible our bodies are, and how important it is to look after them and take care of them. So that was my main objective for the unit, and not to make sure they memorized the functions or anything like that. Now they ended up holding on to a lot of the information um, so much more than I thought they would. Uh, they understand the way the blood flows through our bodies. Um, they know the majority of the parts and the systems that they belong to. So they, they ended up picking up a lot more than I, than I, you know, thought they would. So it was a really good unit. Now I showed you some of these things that I picked up in the very beginning of starting the unit. Um, 
and like I'm saying I'm like I said I didn't use a lot of the resources that I prepared but that is okay because we're going to be doing the body unit over and over again every year and sometimes we don't even wait a whole year to revisit the unit um, if something comes up and something sparks their interest again then we'll pull our resources out and we'll just revisit it um, so some of the other things I got, I did make these little printables um, because what I want to start incorporating in our units is more interactive notebooks. I like the idea of that, um, that in conjunction with some of the artwork that we end up doing for the unit. I ended up making this human body systems printable with that just laid out the different systems that they're able to write in. Um, the different things that they remember as being part of that system. So I like these and they are meant to be cut out and then folded along the edges um, to make like a little accordion inside of their interactive notebook. So I was happy about that. I still have lots of other printouts that we use to reference as we talked about different things. I had this too, that we never even got to. This little uncover the human body, we didn't get around to that. But it'll be there for next time. We did use the x-rays, we talked about this, and I wanted to have a light pad to be able to put the x-rays on, and I just, I didn't get around to purchasing that. It wasn't in the budget for right now, so we just, improvised and a lot of the times we looked at them in front of our um, light from our essential oils our diffuser <laughs> but you just have to use what you have it worked just fine see you can kind of still see it why don't you hold it up Savannah they only have see, to... hold it up I can't see <laughs> So you see the different bones that are inside the hand, and this is how the doctor can see. And of course, we just used them flat on the tables as well, and then we went through and labeled some of the parts, and um, so that was fun. That was fun to have these. We did end up using this. This is something that I got from Ollie's. Like, normally you would think it was outside of their grade level, but I like to get resources like this because it grows with me. So what I do is I go through and pick out the parts that we can use. Um, Cameron actually ended up loving I think it was sight. It's like a bunch. It's like a bunch of real life stories. I think they talked about a firefighter and how your eyes are able. Their eyes are able to focus in um, in extreme situations. So Cameron really liked this, and he watched this several mornings. Um, so that was nice to just kind of introduce him to that. This says Discovery Kids, but like I said, it has a lot more advanced information inside it. So I just use it as a resource for myself to help me you know, just kind of bring to my to the forefront some of the things that I would like to talk about with them. So that's what I did, and that is how I used this. Um, the thing that I think we use the most in this body unit to just spark conversation and just explore from there was actually this Discovery Kids Factivity Journey Around the Inside of Your Amazing Body. This was really nice because we just kind of started out um, our unit time and I guess I basically use this as curriculum um, in the sense that we just kind of started at the beginning of the book and um, I read the different parts and then I listened to their questions and then we went from there. Okay, look, next thing we look, have. Look, oh, good, let's find a tiny hair. Who can find a tiny hair? Do your I heart. Do your heart beating in your look. chest. It's not in your tummy, it's in your chest. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do, handle, <laughs> try to put the bone back together, okay? He looks at an x-ray to see inside of the body so that they can see Look. if the bone is broken. Sometimes they wanted to draw a skeleton, sometimes they wanted to do these activities. Uh, what I like to do a lot of times is when I get resources like this, I don't actually have them fill out the information inside of here because then if I leave this blank, I can reuse it. So that's what we did. We just used their notebooks, um, we read the information, we had little chats about it, and then whatever activity there was, we ended up completing it inside of their notebooks.
So we really enjoyed this. They love the parts. This was the body map. We ended up doing a body map ourselves, so they really had a lot of fun with that. Um, I pull out any of the vocabulary words and make sure they put those into their reading and writing notebooks. Um, in the back of their reading writing notebooks are their vocabulary list. And I've shown that before. I just lay out a set of words that normally has to do um, or directly correlates to the unit we're studying and then they write them um, from Monday through Thursday and then normally by Friday they're able to spell them. So I think this one was one of their favorites inside a drop of blood and here's the thing like I, I used to gauge my unit success off of how many activities we completed. It's one of the things I wanted to do, the activities I wanted to do that I saw on Pinterest was they use these red water beads and these pieces of white, like I guess plastic or paper, and little ping pong balls. I know you guys have seen that. And it looks like the cutest thing ever. And they basically put it in a tub and it's like a little sensory bin and they get like this visual of what the um, blood cells look like and the white blood cells and, and things like that. And I thought it was so cool and I wanted to add it to my activity list. Now we did not do that. <laughs> and that is because you start to uh, uh, add a bunch of stuff to this list of all the resources that you need in order to complete activities, you know, all of that stuff adds up. And so over time, learning to use wisdom about the things that I actually need in order to teach something, yeah, that stuff just kind of falls to the wayside. So um, I really wanted to do that activity, but I just didn't feel like it was worth it. And it turns out that simply having the conversation and letting them draw a little bit to understand and just like being the teacher that I was that day, because I did a good job that day. <laughs> They had a lot of fun and they learned and they drew what they understood and it was great. I don't have any really cool footage of them playing in a nice little blood sensory bin, but um, they still learned, you know? So maybe one day down the line when I have a couple of free bucks to do that activity, then I'll do it. But I don't have to do those activities for them to learn. The thing that I use a lot of time in place of those types of activities is art. So that's why the chalk wall is such a big deal for us and that's why our art supplies are such a big deal for us like paper and paint or paper and markers and pens. I mean they're just a great way for us to be able to illustrate um, some of the things that we're trying to learn without feeling the need to always gather resources in order to complete activities. We made our way through this book and we loved it so much. They completed as many, you know, of the activities listed in here um, as they could in their notebooks. And yeah, this one, I'll probably use this one again, again. What else did I want to say? I think that was pretty much it, really. So at the end of each unit, I make a list of all of the things that we didn't get around to, but you know, this unit really could last for a whole year. But we won't do that. We'll just let that information sink in. We'll move on to a new unit to make it fun and exciting. And then I'll make a list of all the questions they had and all the um, new things that I want to dig deeper into for the next time that we visit the body unit. So yeah, that was my little you know, hopefully helpful recap of what we did for the body unit. There were so many things that I still wanted to do and I just had so many ideas, but I just keep a notebook with my ideas and I just remember that we can revisit it again next time. So my main thing was just that they were introduced to how complex and beautiful our bodies were and some of the systems and some of the, you know, just the bits and pieces of our human body. And we did that. Um, we talked about all of the systems. They can name all the systems, what their functions are, um, which body parts belong to what system. Um, and they have a general like grasp on the importance of caring for our bodies so that they function well. So to me, that was a win in this case. Um, they know a lot of the vocabulary. They are able to spell. And I think I've shown you that on Instagram. Um, a lot of times when we pull out our bananagrams or our apple letters, whatever letter tiles, they were spelling body vocabulary words like nose and eye, 
Um, so I basically just grab a bunch of different vocabulary words that would fit each of them. And we, you know, so Savannah had words like eye and nose. And then Kendall and Cameron had words like exoskeleton and uh, nervous system and things like that. So that's how we kind of do vocabulary. I just wanted to walk you through a little bit of the reality of how our body unit went. I still thought it was super successful. So if you have any questions, um, you probably won't have too many questions because we didn't get around to too many things. But that was kind of how our body unit went. I thought it was a major success and we're excited to move on to the next unit. So thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure that you talk to me in the comments if you have any questions or just want to say hi. Make sure you're subscribed. Give this video a like if you found it helpful or if you just like watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye. It just kind of dragged on, drug on, whatever. What's the word? Drug on? <laughs> okay. What else did I want to say? <laughs> Let me finish this video. I'm tired. <laughs> I get hired above all else for out of it blows the issues of life. Proverbs 4 verse 23. God get hired above all else for out of it flows the issues of life. Proverbs 4.23. Go joke with a better but how did it was the issues of life? Good job, Mama!